Welcome back, everyone. We are talking with Hetty Weinberg from the ACLU about several um, aspects of criminal justice reform. Bunch of calls, so I'm just going to go. We're just going straight to the calls here. Let's go to, let's go to Marilyn. Hello, Marilyn. Hi. Go right ahead. I have a question. I agree with um, the guest that there should be uh, equalization as far as income with releasing people and not holding them in jail. However, I was wondering, is there any way that a provision can be put in this um, reform where if someone is continually being arrested for, even though it's kind of small infractions, but they are kind of escalating in the crimes that they're committing, because there are times when persons are going in for smaller crimes first, and then they're escalating and escalating, and then in one of their crimes, someone ends up getting killed. And people are wondering, well, why were they out in the first place? Right. That's a common thing we hear. All right, so let's, let's talk about that. Thank you for the call. So I think you're right. I mean, the the big concern of the judge or the magistrate who's going to make the decision whether or not you're eligible for, for bail um, always has in the back of his or her mind, what if? But but that's the, the decision, the first decision made is whether or not the person is eligible, okay? Once it's decided that the person is eligible, then the hardship should not be placed on the individual, well, you don't have the money to make bail. And, and that's what we're talking about, that if you're eligible, then having the money available to post bail so you can get out shouldn't be the problem. Eligible meaning, in many cases, nonviolent. You're not, you're not a violent offender. Certainly, again, not murder, those kinds of things. Um, well, we're talking, in most cases, I guess, right? But what you're talking about, eligible, and many, many of these people that are being held in, in Davidson County are nonviolent misdemeanor offenders. But, but what's important to realize is that eligibility is determined based on whether or not you're a flight risk or if you're dangerous to the community. So the, the judge, the magistrate, makes that determination before, then they, before they say, I mean, once they say yes, and then they set your bail, they should be asking questions about what you can afford to pay. Because the reality is, um, your, your, the decision, the ability to get out should not be based on your bank account. And that's what we know is happening. Again, in Nashville and throughout the state and all over the country, this is a big issue, money bail reform. And there are a lot of very exciting things happening. And, you know, hopefully we'll be talking and thinking about this issue in the years to come. We are now streaming uh, live on our Facebook page. We're talking about more than half people arrested in Davidson County for misdemeanors cannot afford to make bail. Bail is set. They can't afford to make bail, which means they sit in jail until their trial. It can be months. Uh, other places don't do it this way. And we're talking with Hetty Weinberg from the ACLU. Let's go to, let's go to Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Hi. What's on your mind? Well, uh, this is a big issue with me. You know, uh, I think, you, I heard you earlier say that they politicize this by either being uh, soft on crime or, or hard on crime. I'm tired of hearing it. I, I want somebody to be wise on crime because I'm paying for all of this. Here recently, maybe you can explain this to me. I've seen Darren Hall on uh, Channel 5's shows here in the morning and in the evening, and I'm trying to understand our, our jail system here now in Nashville. From what I understand, Darren Hall is the men's jail, and Core Civic is a private for profit jail. Well, I had seen somebody, and I saw that they had gotten arrested. I've known them since they were a baby, and they're uh, in their 40s now. And uh, I thought, well, this girl has done messed up, and I looked up her record, and I saw this pattern showing up, and it's exactly how you say, something petty, but now it's just gotten serious because she, she stayed in jail because she couldn't make bail before, got out of jail, dropped on the street running, and I haven't talked to her in over 20 years, but I thought, you know what? 
I'm going to call over there at Core Civic and see now that she has to spend six months of 11.29 sentence because for a last offense it kicked her off for probation to see what is she doing sitting in jail over there? This girl needs some counseling. I know her background. I know her mother and father's background. She really needs to be having some uh, issues worked out. I'm paying for her to sit in jail to make core civic money, but I want her to deal with her issues and not be dropped. All right, so you think people get stuck in the system. Lucy, thank you for the call. What, yeah. do, what do you think of that? Well, I think actually Nashville's doing, and Sheriff Hall is doing some really exciting work work when it comes to providing mental health services and diverting people from just sitting in jail. So you're, you're right, I couldn't agree with you more that, you know, someone gets a, 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 a sentence, 11 months, 29 days, and what's happening during that time? Um, was it the best thing to actually put them in jail or should they be out in more intensive counseling? But the exciting thing right now is as this new jail is being constructed and you can probably find some articles about it or um, probably some articles, I'm sure. Uh, Sheriff Hall with the city, um, with the mayor's office has come up with some really exciting programs that are going to be, and facilities that are going to be built as they build out this jail and I think the recognition now by law enforcement and sheriffs all over the country all over the country and certainly in Tennessee it's very frustrating because they they are locking people up and having to take care of people who really have substance abuse and mental health issues that you cannot treat in jail and so there is an awareness of that. It takes time to kind of dismantle a system that's been in place for so long. And that's what I think is happening. Um, your voice continues to be important. And the more awareness we bring to this issue about the need for community services and the need to help people kind of find the right way to get better um, and not create problems for the rest of the community but at least give them the resources so that they can can move away from the life that you know has gotten them stuck in the criminal justice system is the best way to handle what you're suggesting let's go to billy hello billy are you there billy i'm here go right ahead uh, good afternoon uh let me ask councilman do you live in davidson county ma'am I don't know why that matters. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead with well, your question. Let me say this. So basically, every day you probably have 100 homes broken into, probably 300 cars burglarized all through downtown. The police basically are stopped hustling the cars because as soon as they arrest people, they just let them go. So, man, I don't know why you think that as soon as they lock these people up for burglaries and everything, the sheriff's department is just letting them go. And we wonder why that we are basically our crime rate is just out of the roof. I mean, these people are basically going to jail and they're just being released to the street with nothing. And I mean, man, I, I can just tell you this, they started doing this last February and they're releasing everybody on felonies and everything. And that's the reason the city is going to hell in a handbasket and I think you're smoking something along with them. So the revolving door, um, we hear that a lot. And I, I appreciate, I know a lot of people feel uh, some of what you're saying there. So what, what, what do you say when you hear that? Well, I, I think we have a problem with crime growing in our city, and I couldn't agree with you more that something has to happen. And I think the question becomes, what has to happen? I mean, you know, there's too much poverty in the city, and that needs to be addressed. People need access to jobs. People need jobs where they can make a living to support themselves and their families. People need housing. We, we, you know, we, we look at the criminal justice system and we go, that's where the problem is. The problem is way earlier when we aren't providing the kinds of lives people deserve and want. Most people don't want to be out in the streets robbing and burglarizing, I don't think. Most people want to live and live happily with their friends and family. So I agree with what you're saying, that there's a problem. I think the question becomes, what does that revolving door look like, as Ben said? And um, we need to recognize that you're right. People go to jail, and then they come out, and they don't have access to uh, jobs or training or education or treatment programs and they return to the streets or what they know best 
and then they're right back in their revolving door. So we as a community, as a city, as a society, need to figure out what do we provide folks? Do we want to make sure that they get the job training, that they get the livable wage? How do, how do we do that? And it's not an issue I can solve, certainly by myself, and it's really more about who we are as a community and what kind of culture we want to nurture. So this, this is not, you know, these problems are, are centuries old and we need to figure out how to pursue them. And I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that from the faith-based community to the activists, to the legislators, to those of us who recognize there's a problem, we begin to think about what fixing it requires, what the remedies are. And it's, it's, it's difficult. But we've I've heard police, you know, police chiefs and, and, and some law enforcement get upset about the revolving door. You know, they arrest someone and then they're right back on the street. Is this, is that argument, do you feel like it's separate from your argument or how, how do these two things intermingle and, and how do we, how do we kind of work through the concerns people have there? Well, when you're talking about the revolving door, um, and I'm sorry, I'm blocking this that man's was Wayne. name. Was Wayne's Wayne? No, it was Billy. I'm sorry, it was okay. Billy. Um, I, I don't know the statistics to say that someone gets arrested and the next day, 24 hours later, they're out. I, I just, I can't comment on that. Um, the revolving door about people, you know, commit a crime, serve their time, and then recommit. That's, that's a reality. Um, and we have to figure out how to fix that and we have to provide the services and recognize locking people up and then setting them out without anything isn't going to work. Taking away their license because they can't pay court fines and fees within a year. So they don't have a license so they can't get to work. Um, just doesn't, doesn't fix the problem. So I'm not sure I can solve right. what, what's being suggested. All right, let's take a break. Uh, if you're on the line, hold on. We're also now streaming on Facebook. So I'll read some comments when we come back. Take a break, be back right after this.